the famous German poet Gotthold Ephraim Lessing once stated, both harm themselves. Those ones who expect too much and those ones who promise too much. The latter one we will discuss in this video. Why is it so important to not swear to not promise? Sometimes it can happen that in a conversation, people try to pull us in a situation that we have to promise. Often it is very easy in a very small conversation, like small talk, People just say, when will you come back next time? And then you have to say something. You will maybe say next week or in two days or something like that. And afterwards, you have this silly, unconscious, uncomfortable feeling, which maybe say or let you feel that your energy goes lower. Or you are even more aware already. And you feel that this is a situation where emotions are involved emotions like guilt and shame because from the very childhood we learn that we have to hold promises whenever we promise we have to do it and we if you don't do it we feel guilty or shameful or something like that of some of the lowest emotions and of course something in the soul happens the guilt is there with promises you can say we load up guilt on our shoulders it's a heavy backpack full of guilt when you promise something. For our undiable soul, it is not good to swear. Because when you swear, then you have to hold it. And if you are not sure what is next week, or what if you really are able to hold it, or will you forget, or will you have other appointments then afterwards, latest then you feel guilty. When you see the person which you gave the promise earlier, you see him later, but then two weeks went, this person will ask you, why haven't you been here last week? And then you feel guilty because this person is blaming you. So you can see promises create extra duties, kind of false duties, which only come from the social surface. There are also videos about that social surface, which only exists because it is made by the human mind unconsciously. And most people are living in it, also called my matrix which describes it best, but there are many channels and this about it. The Matrix is only a picture for the illusion, actually. That's what's behind it. Promises and guilt are a result of the modern mankind. And the more far that mankind develops in this kind of wrong direction, which is only for the material world and for the surface development, but not for the inner development, of which this channel, for example, is about. When people develop in the wrong direction, of course, there is always guilt and there are always wrong promises. The whole trade, the whole market exists only from these promises. The whole advertisement branch, they all promise people to become better in life, to get healing, to get everything. But what happens then? In fact, not really something happens. It is only empty promises. For the normal unconscious people, no problem. When they hang in their office or they hang on the production machine, doing all the work all day, again and again, always the same activities, giving them their routine because routines calm them. But they are not on the true path. But for you, what counts is that it harms your soul, your undiable soul, if you promise. Because these promises entangle you. They create false appointments it's only in everyday life any person asks you when will we meet again and if you done go in the trap and name a date or a time you have another appointment and all appointments as you know are entanglement because you have to be then and then at this time there and that is always stress because then your mind is always thinking oh then i have to be there and <laughs> so the more appointments the worse life is and that is harmful for your meditation progress. And that's why I say promising is harmful. And the next thing, you have already guessed it from the previous point. You miss the here and now when you are promising and creating new appointments. Because the more appointments we have, we are in time stress. And the more time stress or any kind of stress is there, we are in the ego because we are in a fighting system. Stress always causes inner conflicts as well as on the opposite side also inner conflicts 
are results from stress. Also, inner conflicts can cause stress. That's another thing. But when you are consciously giving promises and swearing things to people only on small talk, then you are destroying the here and not the here and now in the moment when you are talking with this person. That's okay. But uh, later here now, in the future, actually every moment is now. But the more appointments and other things, duties and so on you create, you entangle in this world, the more you reduce opportunities to be with your awareness in the here and now. Because when you are in the stress, hunting or craving for the next appointment, running to the next thing, then you are forgetting the here and now because only you are watching on the clock or on the watch or on the phone. When is the next appointment? And the next thing is responsibility. Let me give you an example here. For example, if I would promise that when you go on my channel, look at my videos, you definitely get the enlightenment. That would be a silly promise because it's up to you because you have to meditate at the end. I only can explain from my experience how to get access to the meditation, how to maintain meditation, which are signs in the progress. And I can only explain from experiences, add a little bit from science, give some evidence, some quotes, and encourage you to continue and to continue. But at the end, you have to do it yourself. You have to meditate. Because only watching the video is only information, is only knowledge. But the true meditation is about overcoming the knowledge. So first you need some knowledge, but at the end, you even have to forget knowledge and you even have to forget me. I'm not existing. So what to do now as solution if someone brings you in a situation expecting you to promise something? Let's take the previous example. The person comes and asks you, when will we meet again? Then, for example, you can say, it depends. I don't know what next week is. I will call you before we meet. That was all. Or in another situation, any situation, always the best thing is to say, maybe, maybe not. If someone asks you, will this or that happen? And you say, maybe, maybe not. We don't know. It's future. We are living in the now. Remember that? So that is future. Forget it. Each and every situation in your whole life is very different. And always there are different cases. And that's why you always must say, it depends on the case. And so you can't actually not promise anything. But most people just say, it's not a promise, not a true promise. It's only said besides. But at the end, people can load up guilt on you, even if you have said it only besides. For you, it was only besides. But some unconscious people take it too serious. And that's the problem. And another hint from a friend. He's a tour guide and mostly works in Himalayas. And whenever a customer asks him, can you arrange this or that? then he never says yes or no. Because this can entangle him, loading up guilt, all these things we have talked about. He says, let me check. Then he goes, checks if it's available. Then he comes back to the customer. Yes, I can arrange this or that or no. But first he checks. And the last quote from Jesus. Jesus said, don't promise. Say only yes or no. All the rest is from devil. What does this mean? This is your homework. Have an idea to interpret it. Let us know down below in the comments. For those who are brave enough to contribute and to share a solution for the riddle, for the homework, you can win my book. So it's not a competition. I know that Basically, as meditators, you are not so interested in taking part in something like riddles, like games, like competition. That's why I say everyone who contributes, I will send my book in search for more self-development and personal growth with the help of philosophy and psychology. Your contribution in the comments must not be perfect. It's not like there is one solution as interpretation from this Bible verse. There are many solutions. There is no right or wrong. The only thing 
is that you contribute something valuable, not any comment like hello, and that's all. So I want like trying to that you start to interpret that you take a kind of a psychological depth psychological view on Bible verses to get deeper insight than only the religions have. They are very much on the surface. So the official religions, they never interpret in the depths what the true meaning of the scriptures actually was. But if you look at it from a philosophical or from a depth psychological way, you can go deeper. And that's why I want to invite you to try it. But even if you are too shy, no problem. You can do it only for yourself. Try to interpret this first. Have a nice week. See you soon. Bye.